It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. On today's podcast, Bob and I are going to discuss how building and maintaining a solid retirement plan is just like growing a healthy garden. We're going to talk about retiring early. Have you thought about retiring early? Bob and I are going to give you a playbook to figure out how much longer you actually have to work. And we have our star advisor on the show today, Frankie LaGrateria, on our spotlight segment where she's going to actually review and break down someone's real retirement plan for you. So let's check it out. So Bob, not that you spent a lot of time working in the yard, if at all, when we were growing up, <laughs> but why don't we discuss what retirement planning has in common with growing a garden? You know, Ryan, I resent that comment. I spent a lot of time in the garden looking at all the work that the other people did. <laughs> You're a great surveyor of the, uh, of the lawn. I'll give you that. Well, you know, I delegate things to people who are more expert than me. Well, that's why they've always called you the master delegator. So uh, your reputation precedes you, Bob. Well, but it is a good point, though, right? Gardening is a lot like investing. It is. And, you know, the first thing I think about is, you know, when you grow a garden, plants just don't grow overnight. How can we, how can we equate that, Bob, to our planning and investing? Well, I think Charlie Munger said it best, right? He said the, the big money is not in the buying, it's not in the selling, but it's in the waiting. Yes, because I mean, if you're really honest about it, good investing, Bob, is really, really boring, kind of like watching grass grow. <laughs> well, it's a little more exciting than that, but um, the one thing you can't do is keep checking on it to see if it's growing. Yes. I mean, one of the worst offenders, we have some clients that like to check their balances on a daily basis, but that can be a dangerous game to play because you're watching your portfolio go up, watching it go down in such a short period, and you're really investing that money for the long term. That can be problematic when it comes to your psyche and trying to stay invested for the long term. And that's the whole thing, right? Because it, it generates fear and greed, right? So if you're fearful, you might pull out of the market, just like you, if you go out every night and you pull the roots out on your plants to see if they're growing, it doesn't turn out too well. I mean, it, it sounds like it'd be really hard to do, but I think sometimes the best investment strategy is when you get the money invested and you check it like once a year. It's probably impossible to do that, but the, the more you can stay away from the short term, it's kind of like, Bob, when you buy a house, you're thinking, I'm going to live in this house for a long period of time. You're not worried about the price of your houses on a daily basis. That's just crazy, yet we do it with our investments. Yeah, and that same thing comes with a garden, right? You know, you have to have diversification. In one year, you know, for whatever reason, strawberries grow well, where the next year it's tomatoes. You never know which crop or which part of your garden is going to do the best. Same thing with your portfolio. You can't predict which part of your portfolio is going to do best. That's why you need to diversify your investments as well as your garden. Yeah, exactly right. So you diversify that garden. And then, Bob, when you're maintaining it, you've got to keep away the weeds and the pests. And how can we equate that to our investments? What are the weeds and pests of the investment world? Oh, that's so easy. It's bond funds and annuities. <laughs> Wait a second, Bob. Are you saying that insurance salesmen like to sell us insurance products that have a lot of fees? They do. They're the pests, right? They're the, they'll keep pestering you because you don't buy these investments. They're sold and they're sold by pests. And when you look at <laughs> bond funds, you look at annuities, they're just like a weed. They look pretty, right? They're, they're sturdy, but they end up being the ugliest thing you could possibly have in your garden. That's so, it's such a great point, right? You get this finely veneered brochure and then you hear about things like income for life and it sounds so sexy and it sounds so good. But what you don't realize when you look under the hood is it's costing you a lot of fees and there's other ways to generate income. And usually, Bob, you have to give something up more than you should when it comes to your retirement. That's where these pests, these salesmen put you to disadvantage because they don't give you all the facts. I mean, hey, Ryan, if I lay a strawberry next to a tomato, you can see the difference. Unfortunately, all you see are shiny brochures. You see the names of investments. They don't tell you every week in or week out how much it's costing you, what the disadvantages are, what are the risks. These are things you only realize in hindsight. Yeah, it's so important to understand how all your investments work in layman's terms. It can't be complex, and you have to understand the real fees that are involved because they're just not going to tell you, so you have to investigate further. 
The other thing, Bob, is that we find all the time, and this is very similar to gardening, is you want to have the right tool for the right task. But I find a lot of times with your retirement plan, you have so much money sitting in cash, earning 1%, 2%, and that's just not going to cut it for you to get to your goals. It can be the wrong tool a lot of the time. Well, you know, Rod, your grandmother loved cash. She loved her passbook account where she could go down to the savings and loan, have them pencil in her balance. It always went up. It never went down. And she felt really good about that. Yeah, but the problem with that is, and we know right now, look, you see a CD paying 2% or 2.5% if you want to get crazy. You've got to pay taxes on that money, Bob. So it's not like you're just getting 2.5%. You pocket that. Uncle Sam gets a piece. So now maybe you're getting 1.5% on your money. And cost of living, which has been going up every year, has gone up higher than that. So you're losing money. And that's a real dangerous game to play with money that you need to grow to keep up with the cost of living. It's critical. Yeah, right. Sounds like a bad deal. Sounds like a really bad deal. Yet we've seen historic numbers going into cash and CDs right now. And I'm willing to bet that you're guilty of that right now because you're afraid of what's going to happen. But the great irony is, Bob, interest rates are really low. But if you have a diversified portfolio, you can still generate a lot of current income to keep your lifestyle intact for retirement. Well, you know, Riley, I've been doing this for 45 years. So the majority of the clients that I manage and that I help are retired and they're living off of this income. And what we found is that if you're, you know, really wealthy, you can afford to have really dumb investments. But if you're <laughs> like all of us, you know, you need to make your money work for you. So, for example, you know, most of you live maybe 30, 40 percent of your, of your retirement income is going to come from Social Security. You now, maybe a little bit less. But um, if you're going to generate the rest from like a CD to generate one hundred thousand dollars in income, you got to have five million dollars invested at two percent. And that's yeah, that's tax. crazy. And you still have to pay taxes on it, Bob. Yeah, that's crazy. And so you need you need to have a portfolio that's going to generate that income. You know, I don't have one client that calls me and says, Bob, how's my portfolio doing versus the Dow Jones Industrial Average? What they want to know is how much are you putting in my checking account this month so I can take my next trip, planning for my next cruise. I want to take my children, my grandchildren to, to Disney World. All they care about is the income that's being generated simply so they can enjoy their retirement, right? Exactly right, Bob. It's a better outcome with income, not the fluctuations of the market. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic retirement review where we look at the whole picture. All you need to do is print those statements off the computer if they came in last month, put them in a folder, bring them in the office. We're going to take all those statements, take all that data and build for you your own personalized financial portal so you can view your entire financial life in one place. And then we're going to start looking at all the critical components, everything from fees. Yes, those insurance products, mutual funds, bond funds, they have a lot of hidden fees you don't know you're paying. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are in your portfolio how to reduce that cost so there's more money in your pocket for retirement. We're going to look at diversification. Are you sitting with way too much money in cash and CDs right now, earning nothing? Are you taking too much risk in the market? Did you get hit hard in December when the market sold off? We're going to show you how to build the right amount of risk in your portfolio, bulletproof it, and protect you in retirement. And we're going to look at income. Income is the most critical component to your retirement plan. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio so you can generate a stream of income that you can outlive in the most tax-efficient manner. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844 752 6692 or simply click the get started button on bebullish.com. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone, gird your loins. Let's find out. So, Bob, based on your experience, when someone says they want to quote unquote retire 
early. How early do they usually mean? Wait a minute, Rod. You're talking about my new article, Retiring Minds Want to Know? What's the key to a smooth retirement? <laughs> Bob, yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> I think, first of all, retiring early, which is all the rage, right? I think it's called FIRE. What does FIRE stand for, Rye? Right? I think it's about financial independence, retire early. It's all the rage. You see it on all the websites right now. Yeah, it's like every millennial is going to retire early. And the thing they don't realize, I don't think, Rye, is that their lifestyle is going to change as they get older. So, you know, the way you're spending money in your 30s can change dramatically in your 40s and your 50s. And I, I don't think they really have enough put away or, or understand that Social Security may not be there when they retire like it is for the baby boomers today. Yeah, I think there's so many variables that the, the younger generation yet has not factored in, and especially because they're just getting to that those household formation years. But for baby boomers, you've been through that already. You already know that it's going to take a lot more to retire now than it did for your parents' generation. And we talk about this a lot, Bob, but just because, look, you're going to live a lot longer, you're going to be retired a lot longer, and there's a greater cost for health care costs as well. It's going to be a lot more money than it used to be to fund retirement. You know, right over my 45 years, the financial planning industry has always said, you're only going to need about 70 or 80% of your current after-tax income to live on in retirement. But you're not finding that to be the case, are you? No, I think it's more realistic nowadays that you got to plan for 100% because what happens, Bob, when you retire, the time that you were working gets filled up with a lot of other things. And a big one are things like trips, you know, maybe more golf, you know, there's maybe more time with the grandkids to spoil them. But it's amazing how much you end up actually spending in retirement that 70, 80% of your income is old school. It doesn't work anymore. No, it's so true. And then it, factor in that, you know, quarter of a million dollars in healthcare expenses that Fidelity just published a report that we're going to have to spend on our health care in retirement that I'll tell you, right, the majority of plans that I've run over the last five to 10 years, people weren't aware of that expense. Yeah. It's crazy that you haven't put that into your financial projections yet. It's so key. But when you sit down with us, we like to throw the proverbial kitchen sink at your investment plan or wealth plan just to see what variables could derail it because you really want to know what's the worst case scenario, Bob. Now you do, Ryan. It's great that we have the tools to show the numbers, but you know, retirement planning is more than just projecting numbers and predicting inflation and you know, adjusting for rates of return. You know, what you need to do is really invest some time in figuring out what's going to make you happy, right? Figure out what are you going to do in retirement, what's going to make you jump out of bed every day? Because it's not going to be that job any longer, that deadline. You know, it's not going to be that kind of stress. It's going to be the stress of how to really enjoy the rest of your life. And we found statistics on this, Bob. And I think we can speak just to our own client base. The, the clients that retire and stay active or they're semi-retired tend to be happier and tend to live longer than clients that just say, hey, I'm done. I'm checking out now. It's a really critical. I think it's something we don't talk enough about what you just mentioned, but it's like you got to have a game plan for what you're going to do on top of not just the income you're going to need. Yeah, rather it's, you know, volunteering or, you know, spending time on a hobby. Well, wait a minute, Rod. You're not telling me that if I retire, I got to spend time gardening, are you? <laughs> I think you can still delegate that. I suspect you're still going to delegate that no matter what happens, Bob. Okay. Um, All right. <laughs> but the other thing too is, you know, I, you hear this a lot too. You might think, well, I'm just going to work forever. I don't have to worry about retirement. So, you know, the other thing we talk about now, Bob, is just being financially independent because a lot of times because of a health issue or because you get forced out, you may have to retire unexpectedly and you need to have a game plan in place for that. Yeah, I see that happening a lot, right? I see people that uh, have these unexpected health issues where as much as they have the desire to go in and work or stay in, you know, engaged, they just physically can't do it. Yeah. And when that income stream turns off, what's your game plan? And in our experience, it's so much better to do this planning proactively. Start to run those numbers now. Don't wait until all of a sudden you can't work anymore. Now you're scrambling. You got all these portfolios out there. You have no idea what they're doing. But if you start thinking about these things ahead of time, it just makes life so much easier. And that's why I really worry about the millennials who are talking about the fire movement, you know, where they want to retire early. They really don't factor in, you know, what happens if they have physical or mental issues and they don't have the assets, you know, invested or do they have the assets accumulated simply because they didn't work long enough. Yeah. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I do want to retire early, you know, the first thing you need to do is tally up those assets, Bob, because that's the other thing. And that's why I love our 360 portal, because uh, by tallying everything up, 
and starting to run those projections on like, hey, I have this much money. What does that mean? Can I retire early? Is much more meaningful than just saying, yeah, I want to retire early. That sounds great to say, but you got you have to run the numbers. Maybe right. That's why you call it the total financial master plan. It's not just about investments. It's about the totality of your life, understanding that it's not just work that makes you happy. It's having a great, fulfilling life that makes you happy. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review where we're going to look at everything. You know what? It's the only financial review you're going to need in 2019. We're going to help you to create your own 360 financial portal. All you have to do is gather all your statements, put it in a folder, stick it in your shopping bag, make an appointment. We're going to sit down with you and review everything. We're going to put all that information on your portal, which will allow you to become financially organized and more importantly, be able to view your complete financial life in real time at your convenience. We're going to sit down with you and make sure that your portfolio has the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, low cost, and high income. You know, we need to be diversified. Wall Street talks about it all the time, but you want to be diversified across asset classes as well as within within asset classes. You don't want to be stuck in those dreaded bond funds or those annuities where you're going to have nothing but disappointment when it comes time to cash in those investments. We're going to look at costs. Yeah, there's lots of hidden costs out there, but they're, you know, they're fully, they're in full view, but they're hidden. They're hidden because Wall Street doesn't want you to know what they are. We want to take those fees out of your advisor's pocket and put it back in your portfolio where it belongs. And income, we all need income to fill that gap once we retire. And if we're currently retired, hey, the number one goal of all retirees is to keep it that way. So let's make sure we have that repeatable, dependable income stream. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we'll answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families just like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk, and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or click the Get Started button on bbullish.com. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. And now we have a very, very special guest on the show, my colleague, Bob's colleague, financial advisor at Payne Capital Management, Frankie. And if you want to be one of Frankie's financial friends, you want to listen to this, Frankie Lagrataria. Man, Frank, I always like to get in Frankie's financial friends because it just sounds so good. Very, very good. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? Thanks for being I'm here with us. doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's always a pleasure. Um, so Frank, this is our Spotlight segment each week. We dissect a real financial plan and we uncover what we call the flaws or pain points, that's P-A-Y-N-E, so our listeners can avoid the same mistakes with their own planning and investing. What you got this week? Yeah, thanks for having me. So this week uh, I reviewed with a couple looking to retire soon and hearing one of my number one, you know, when I asked them, what, what, are, what are your goals for this money? The number one goal, I think, is to have a moderate return and live comfortably throughout retirement. Just not lose their money, just get a nice, easy, steady return, and just you know, live out life without having to go back to work or anything else. So Frankie, how were they doing with their plan when they, when they met you? So a few big things that popped up at me, one being the split between equities and cash. They're about a 50-50 split, and where I don't mind that allocation between bonds and equities, between cash and equities. That's a big difference. Yeah, we talked about a lot on the show this morning. It's just, you know, you're using the wrong tools with your retirement plan. If you're sitting with a lot of money in cash and CDs, they're just earning very low interest rates, and that just doesn't cut it versus the cost of living. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of us are making right now. 
Yeah, absolutely. And especially since they say on average, you know, the investor, the average investor who's doing it themselves is only getting about 3% a year and inflation's going up 3% a year. That's the end. You figure the 3% that you're earning, you're losing against, you know, taxes because taxes have to be paid on your return. We see this all the time. Absolutely. So right off the back, I was like, you know, a big difference is getting you some of this cash invested for you, getting this a little bit better diversified. We can change that, you know, average of 3% to closer to an average of 5, 6%, which outpaces inflation and is getting them to their goals. You know, they don't need a huge amount of risk. You know, we're not swinging for the fences here, but you know, that's that's all they need. So, you know, my philosophy and, and you know, Ryan's philosophy is always why take the risk, why take more risk than what you need. Yeah, because uh, it, what you want to do is achieve an income stream that will overcome your expenses. And all you need is a little maybe one or two percent in appreciation of those assets to overcome inflation. That sounds like a win-win strategy to me, Frankie. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, people call me all the time and they're saying, you know, Frankie, I'm, I'm not sure what the markets are going to be doing this week. I don't know what they're going to be doing this year. And I'm like, hey, you know, me neither. <laughs> 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 that makes two of us. You know, yeah. it, it could be switched with a tweet, but that's short term. So for yeah. the short term, why stress about it when you can have long-term growth and income now? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's a really good point. I think that's the thing that we need to address is... You, you probably don't even know what your investments produce on an annual basis. I mean, it's just like doing that tally up. And I love that, that spreadsheet you put together, Frank. You were, we put all the assets on one page. You can see everything. And we can just break down what is your money producing for you. And a lot of times, it's not working hard enough. And with some tweaks, to your point, not worrying about the ups and downs of the market, you can start to build in some return, meaning building in that consistent in- income stream, just making some tweaks to your portfolio. Absolutely. So I think the big thing that when they came in, they said, you know, hey, you know, we have a lot invested in the market. They have about 34% just in that S&P large cap area itself. And they're like, our money's working. It's working hard because we've been in the best bull market over the past 10 years. We're doing amazing. And that's fine and all while the, while the market's doing great. But if we circle back to 2008, which wasn't that long ago, you know, if you have over 34% of your portfolio just in one asset class, and that asset class gets hit 38%, you know, that's a huge dip for you. And especially come retirement, sure you're not really looking to have those swings because you don't have that salary to just, you know, kind of act as like a, as a, as a blinders. Well, Frankie, how much were they generating in income invested the way they, they came into you, how they were currently allocated? They're only yielding about 1.6%. So basically, they could have gotten the same thing in a a stinky money market. Well, having said that, that that stinky money market very, very uh, that's a common financial term. So (laughs) what? By just there's good ones and then there's stinky ones. (laughs) So I mean, in terms of just tweaking the portfolio, I mean, by just re looking at everything in one place, looking at what their investments were producing now versus what you could do, what did you estimate you could increase or bring their income up to on an annual basis? Yeah, so just by getting them better diversified in different, you know, ETF, something, you know, very passive investments, getting them into individual bonds in which they own each bond themselves, I could bump up their income to over 3% or over $160,000 a year. Wow, that's crazy. So that's a $160,000 increase over what their portfolio is producing right now. And that's taking not a lot of risk. That's the key. You know, the thing I think we always think about when we get invested is, oh my God, I got to put all my money at risk. I'm going to put my money in the market and that's the day the market's going to tank, of course, because I put my money in. But the reality of it is you can get a nice balanced portfolio of risk and safe investments and you can produce a lot more income than just sitting in cash in those CDs. And that's just like, that's real money. If anything, I'd argue that it, it's safer. You know, we're not having as much heavily invested in the S and P. We're not losing against inflation by just keeping it in cash. You know, it's helping them now get to their goals, whereas before they were struggling if something big were to pop up. You know, Frank, I've been doing this for forty five years, and and it always said just amazes me where people think investing is buy low, sell high, but it's really staying invested, being patient. It's a total return that comes from appreciation that happens in spurts plus the income that happens all the time. I mean, you make money every day when you're invested in dividends and interest. You accrue those every day. They're paid into your account. But this is substantial. I mean, to increase somebody's income by that amount of money 
is so significant, it's life-changing. Yes. Absolutely. It's absolutely life-changing, especially if you're getting 168000 right now that you're compounding so that you could have even more dividends with more interest and more payments. You know, big concerns that they had down the line, like long-term care, wasn't as scary. Another financial masterpiece, as Bob likes to say, and that's the thing. It's simplicity over complexity. You know, let's make sure we create an income stream for you that you can outlive. Let's look at how you manage the risk. You know, put your money into places where when the market takes a big hit, you're not getting hammered. Like These are very simple things that have to get done. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.